Thank you very much, Steve. What he didn't say was that this is like a homecoming. I had a short stint at teaching at SIPA, um, and that was one of the, the most enjoyable times I had, especially when we talk about engaging youth for the future. They were youth there and then, and they certainly challenged, and I had a huge learning curve. Honorable Anne Hildago, the mayor of Paris and our C40 chair, it's amazing to have a woman at the helm of affairs. Our Honorable Michael Bloomberg, who's our special envoy at the UN for Cities and Climate Change, and we're so happy to have you here, the C40 board president. Uh, Steve Cohen, the executive director of the Earth Institute, Columbia University. Our other mayors that are here from around the world, distinguished participants. I'm really pleased to be here with you from so many city leaders and women city leaders from around the world. I really commend the commitment in making cities safe, smart, and sustainable for all. Cities today are at the core of ambitious and innovative climate action. Mayors and local government networks, such as the United Cities and local governments, and C40, are leaders in reducing emissions and improving climate resistance, resilience. Initiatives such as the Covenant of Mayors and Climate and Energy, the Peking Pioneer Cities in China, and the new 1.5 degree commitment by a select group of megacities are paving the way to a sustainable future. And we need this commitment and innovation now. Cities are responsible, as we know, for more than 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. They're also a growing proportion of the human population lives. More than half of all people living in towns and cities, and more than half of all our people are women. So all city planning and climate strategies need to have a strong gender element. Your policies and actions directly affect gender equality and women's empowerment. And that's why the Paris Agreement on Climate Change emphasizes gender responsive climate responses and enhancing the capacity of women to tackle climate change. To achieve this, women will need to be involved in decision making and leadership. We must address the links between gender climate change, and land access in urban spaces. And we must enhance women's role in disaster response. Women are often the first responders, attending to both the immediate and early recovery needs of families and communities. And of course, we must make cities safe for our women and our girls. More than 25 cities, from Cairo to New Delhi, from Bogota to Edmonton, are participating in the UN Safe Cities and Safe Public Spaces global flagship initiatives. In Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, where 80% of market vendors are women, the Safe City program has supported the establishment of the Safe Cities Women's Group and vendor associations have been set up with 50% representation of women. Changes in public infrastructure include access to safe water, hygiene facilities and improved sanitation, a children's playground and financial literacy training. There's also a strong focus on safe public transport for women and girls, improved walkability in the city, and solar lighting to bus shelters. These, this is just one example of how many cities can be improved for women and girls and for all citizens. The Paris Agreement and the new urban agenda offer an opportunity to make cities a hub of sustainable development as we implement the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals. Implementing them can unlock the transformative power of cities so long as all stakeholders are engaged and it is an inclusive agenda. Local governments, women's organizations, the private sector, persons with disabilities, academia, labor unions, and young people. By working together, we can build prosperity, resilience, and dignity for all on a healthy planet. This meeting, I hope, will produce many of the solutions that we need and really break down all, as we say in Nigeria, the grammar around what it is that needs to be done. An example of what we were able to achieve in the 15 months I went home to prove that the SDGs were implementable was to take the climate change agreement and the national contributions that we had promised and to look in a city like Abuja, what could we do? Um, and in doing that, we brought together financing through a sovereign green bond 
and the transport. Transport and reducing emissions which were growing in that city. But we also reached out to what people didn't really see, but women had the burden of in their health. And that was the level of firewood that was being used in our cities to cook the meals in restaurants, in prisons, in hospitals, in schools, and to find alternative ways of bringing cleaner energy into the city. So breaking this down into tangibles that we can connect to finances so that we can bring in the scale of the opportunities that need to be realized in our cities will be an important part of the work that we do going forward. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak to everyone and encourage especially our women leaders um, to really lead the way um, in making sure that 2030 becomes a reality. I thank you.